Experiments are used to study cause and effect relationships. You start with a prediction called a hypothesis and then test that prediction in a control setting. Designing experiment means planning exactly how you test your hypothesis to reach valid conclusions. To create a strong experimental design, you need to answer some key questions. What are your independent and dependent variables? How will you balance internal and external validity? How will you manipulate your independent variable? Will you compare outcomes between or within groups? How will you measure your dependent variable? In this video, I'll walk you through the practical decisions you need to make in your experimental design using a simple example to explain each choice. Hi, I'm Jessica from Scribber, here to help you achieve your academic goals. First, identify your independent and dependent variables. In an experiment, you manipulate an independent variable and measure whether it causes a change in the dependent variable. For example, Let's say you're interested in the effects of caffeine on short-term memory. Your independent variable is caffeine consumption and your dependent variable is short-term memory performance. By varying the amount of caffeine consumed by participants, you can test whether it causes any difference in short-term memory performance. You'll also need to control other variables that could affect your dependent variable outcomes. In our example, you might control the amount of sugar in the drinks, the time of day you test participants, and the test environment, because these can all affect memory test performance. As you design your experiment, you need to strike a balance between internal and external validity. Internal validity is about how strongly you can demonstrate causation. You'll need to make sure that nothing other than your manipulation can explain your outcomes. External validity is about how confidently you can generalize your findings to broader populations or real-life settings. Are your study subjects representative of the population you're interested in? Is your study environment similar to the context you apply your findings to? There's a trade-off between internal and external validity. Experiments have higher internal validity than other types of research, but they often have lower external validity. To manipulate your independent variable, you create two or more conditions. These are sometimes also called treatments or levels of the independent variable. You need to decide how many conditions to use and how widely they will vary. For example, in your caffeine experiment, you could use three conditions. Participants will receive drinks with either no caffeine, low caffeine, or high caffeine. For internal validity, you need at least one control condition to compare with your experimental conditions. In our example, the control condition is no caffeine. For external validity, you'll need to consider how well your conditions reflect real-life settings. In your experiment, you compare different conditions with each other. But first, you need to decide whether you'll compare these between or within groups. A between groups or between subjects design means that each subject will only experience one condition. In our example, that means you have three groups. Group 1 receives a decaffeinated drink, Group 2 receives a low caffeine drink, and Group 3 receives a high caffeine drink. Participants are placed into one of the three groups at random, and you compare the short-term memory performance of these different groups. A within groups or within subjects design means that each subject experiences all conditions. That means a single group of subjects tested on short-term memory three times. After a decaffeinated drink, a low caffeine drink, and a high caffeine drink, you compare these repeated measurements from the same subjects. Within groups designs are often cheaper and faster, but between groups designs have stronger internal validity. Finally, you need to decide how you collect data on your dependent variable outcomes. You should aim for reliable and valid measurements that minimize bias or error. For example, to measure short-term memory, you could use a classic digit span test, where participants are presented with random sequences of numbers and asked to recall each sequence in order. The percentage of numbers correctly recalled reflects short-term memory. How precisely you measure dependent variables also affects the kinds of statistical analysis you can use on your data. And here's a final tip. 
If you're studying people or animals, don't forget to consider ethics in your design. This includes things like obtaining consent, minimizing harm, and data anonymity. You might need to get ethical approval for performing your experiment. Now that you've got a taste of the key ingredients of experimental design, hopefully you're ready to get started. If you need more help with a specific step, check out articles here. I'll see you in the next video.